the Bible says that every kingdom divided against itself will not stand. So if Christians in the kingdom of God are fighting against each other, or one church is saying that they are bigger than the other church, or one church is you know, preaching messages that are indirectly beefing the other church, or this church, or they feel that they are more superior than... It's just a mess. It's just a mess. We must realize that no matter our denomination, no matter our different churches, we are all a part of the body of Christ. We are all one body. Because whether we realize it or not, in heaven, all these things will not matter. The churches, the church you went to, the denomination you went to, would not matter in heaven. What will matter is that were you able to love your brother in Christ, irrespective of the church you attended. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. So today I want to talk about the importance of godly relationships. And our scriptural reference will take it from Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Please, I'll put it in the description box. Please do well to check it out after this video so that it will give context to what I'm talking about. And please read it. Thank you so much. God bless you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing I want us to know is that godly relationships fosters our relationship with God. It encourages our relationship with God. Now the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So it is important that we do not despise the you know, need for godly relationships in our lives. Finding people of like minds, people that you know love God together, people that you can serve God with together. Because there's just this, you know, thing of you knowing that you are not alone in the in the, in the Christian work, you're not alone in this journey of you know Christianity, but somebody is you know also with you to cheer you on, to encourage you when you are down. So it is very important that you know we understand that godly relationships is paramount in our work with God, and we also have to ensure that we are not wood. We are we are also iron that we are sharpening another person, because one thing that I realized is that if you are not contributing to your, your that godly relationship you would definitely discourage the other person so you must take it upon yourself that you are also you know you're, you're also responsible in that relationship you, are, you also see the uh, that relationship as a ministry as a way of you know building your brother your brother in christ because energies are very contagious if somebody feels that you are not interested in you know pursuing god there's a way that you just it just has a way of just you know drain the person's energy and you don't want that so you must ensure that you are not wood you are also iron that is also sharpening the other person that is iron so that together you guys can also you know you guys can you know be a blaze for god and you guys can burn for god and you guys can desire god more because you know two are better than one yes but it is only when the two people are actually interested in you know building that relationship building that godly relationship that they are actually better than one the next thing i want us to know is that we are all a part of the whole body of christ so our different gifts should not be uh, intimidating to us our different gifts should not be a, 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 a reason to be jealous of the next person or to compare ourselves with the next person because the bible says that they that they compare themselves with themselves are not wise so we must realize that our different gifts are not for comparison but they are meant to you know help with the proper functioning of the whole body of christ and so it's our duty to genuinely care for one another so that you know because we we have to realize that if one part is dysfunctional it will affect the rest of the body just as if I'm having a headache I will not be able to function properly so I cannot say that oh, uh, my head is not important uh, my leg cannot tell my head that is not important my tongue cannot tell my teeth that it is not important we have to realize that in order to have a proper functioning of the body of Christ we have to dwell in unity we have to dwell in love because in reality the human the human body if one part of the body is fighting against the part, another part of the body if two cells are fighting that is one of the main causes of cancer so if we don't want you know uh, that kind of situation in the body of christ then we have to also realize among ourselves we have to realize that in the godly relationship we have to care for ourselves we have to be loving we have to remove comparison we have to remove strife we have to remove 
in gratitude we have to focus on our assignment we have to know that god has called us for a reason and we are not irrelevant no matter how nobody is insignificant even the least the, the, the tongue that is the smallest part of the body cannot the, the, the head cannot tell the tongue that is irrelevant because if the tongue is cut off the head is not going to function properly you understand because it is from the tongue that you know words are spoken words are expressed from you know what the head is thinking so we must realize that every part of the body of christ is important so even as we build godly relationships we must take this to mind that nobody is insignificant nobody is superior or inferior to another person if we do not love if we do not genuinely care for ourselves then we would not function properly as the body of christ we will not function properly as who God has called us to be. The Bible says that every kingdom divided against itself will not stand. So if Christians in the kingdom of God are fighting against each other, or one church is saying that they are bigger than the other church, or one church is you know, preaching messages that are indirectly beefing the other church, or this church, or they feel that they are more superior than... It's just a mess. It's just a mess. We must realize that no matter our denomination, no matter our different churches, we are all a part of the body of Christ. We are all one body. Because whether we realize it or not, in heaven, all these things will not matter. The churches, the church you went to, the denomination you went to, would not matter in heaven. What will matter is that were you able to love your brother in Christ, irrespective of the church you attended? Were you able to, you know, so, to, to support him towards fulfilling his purpose? Were you able to support him towards, you know, manifesting and, you know, fulfilling the gift and the assignment that God called him to? Or were you just jealous and comparing yourself? Or, you know, just envious and, you know, were, were you just throwing strife and shades here and there? God will ask you on the last day. God will not ask you if what church did you attend before you enter the kingdom of God? What we ask you, were you able to love your brother? Were you able to give sacrificially? Were you, were you, were you able to, you know, honor people above yourself? Were you able to be selfless in your service? Were you able to serve your brother irrespective of the church you went to? So we must realize that a kingdom divided against themselves itself will not stand. Another thing we must realize that human beings are not perfect. So we must re this is one thing that God has been teaching me that human beings are not perfect. So, irrespective of, you know, you know, we come together as a body of Christ, we come together, you know, with, you know, to study God's work together, to build, to grow in Christ together. But there's sometimes that we would offend each other. Offenses are inevitable. So, you must understand that we are not perfect, but God is perfect. And so, the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. But so when we love each other, when we you know we, we, we are able to selflessly love ourselves, then it will be able to cover up every all these you know material sins and we'll be able to forgive freely because we know that we have freely been forgiven by God by by a perfect father because we ourselves were not perfect. So it is unfair from of us to expect perfection from the next person when you you yourself are not perfect. So we must realize that offenses will come. It is our duty for us to love people into becoming who God has called them to be and not manipulating them into who we want them to be. We must always realize that it's not our duty to make people you know, change or to make people become who we think is a perfect Christian. You know, we, it is very, very easy for us to fall into the temptation of, you know, um, wanting to change people or wanting to, you know, uh, you just want to change this person. We must realize that we don't have the capacity to change anybody. I've said it in, a, in, a, in one of our, my videos that we don't have any the capacity to change anybody. It's only the Holy Spirit that has the capacity to change people. And what the, the Holy Spirit and what God has made us, has given us the capacity to do is to love people, is to love people into becoming who he has made them to be because love has a way of just changing people love has a way of transforming the lives of people and we're not loving people because we want them to change we're loving people because we have enjoyed the love of god and so we see it as our responsibility to also reciprocate that love to our brothers and before you know it you will see that you know they just over and over again they just start to become more like christ because that love love just is just very powerful and potent enough to break through the hardest of hearts to transform the worst of characters and to change the worst of hearts may god help us in jesus name another thing i want us to know is that godly relationships teach us selfless service 
you cannot be in a godly relationship and i'm not even talking about mind you i'm not talking about relationship as far as romantic relationship i'm talking about platonic relationship the relationship that we have for you know our brothers and sisters in the law in the lord and so it is one, one way to you know build and you know have a, a very healthy godly relationship is to serve selflessly godly relationship teaches us selfless service it teaches us to lay down our lives for our brothers it teaches us the way christ laid down his life for us and so it teaches us that way to also lay down our lives for others christ is our perfect example we saw that christ laid down his life for us and he also giving us the ability to also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters in the lord so one, 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 way that, one thing that godly relationships teaches us is that it teaches us to be selfless enough to lay down our lives for others. I'm not talking about laying down our lives for others as in killing ourselves physically. No, Christ has done that on the cross by you know, dying for us on the cross and saying it is finished. But when I say laying down our lives, I'm still talking about dying to self, dying to the feeling of self-importance, dying to the feeling that you are more important than the next person, dying to the feeling that, oh, this person is irrelevant or this i'm more important than this person or no i know more than this person but the ability to honor people above yourself no matter the level you are because i will oh my goodness they just took the lights <laughs> Anyways, that cannot stop me because I will say this over and over again. No matter the level of what of you know, your, no matter your level of relationship with God, you would never become an adult of God. You would always be a child of God. May God help us and help Nepa in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. We must realize that Jesus Christ is our perfect example. Jesus Christ was a servant leader. We saw the way he washed the feet of his disciples. We saw the way he was, you know, when they came to look for him. You know, after um, after Judas denied him, Jesus had to give them a sign because he was he was looking the same like all of them. He was wearing the same outfit as all of them. He was not different. He he was you know he, he people were not able to recognize him except if they you know they knew him before. But if you are just meeting Jesus for the first time uh, in those days, you would not know because he wore the same clothes as all of them. So we must realize that Jesus Christ is our perfect example. In you know serving selflessly and having a servant spirit because the bible says that anyone that would desires to be the greatest in the kingdom of god must first of all serve must be a servant must have a servant's heart must you know we call it servant leadership you must be able to wash the feet of you know your friends you must be able to submit to people you must be able to serve people selflessly the last thing i want us to know is that godly relationships helps us to you know strengthens us when the going gets tough you know sometimes in our work with god it gets difficult you know sometimes we, we are discouraged sometimes we are you know we pass through down times you know it's not every time that we are you know we are encouraged sometimes that we pass through situations that affect our relationship with god but when we have you know people of like minds that we can be able to draw strength from it just has a way of encouraging us and letting us think that we are not alone in this journey of life we're not alone in this you know in this christian race we're not alone in we, we are not the only ones following god you know sometimes we we, we tend to feel that or sometimes we we, we tend to feel that we are the only ones that are following God among our group of friends. But when there's the, something that godly relationships does, it just helps you to realize that you are not the only one. You are not the only one serving God. Like the, God has reserved people in God has reserved a, a handful of people. God has reserved not even a handful. God has reserved thousands and millions of people that are serving Him faithfully. And so when we are able to connect with the right kind of people, we are able to connect with. You know godly minds and you know christ-like minds you know people that 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 love god and want to serve god it just helps us to it just helps to ease the process of serving god you know it, it just has a way of strengthening us and encouraging us that you know we're not the only ones in this journey and you know god is with us so quick question what is one way that you think we can build godly relationships how can we you know build godly relationships and how can we encourage ourselves to you know in our in our godly relationships how can we encourage ourselves to you know um, desire more of christ and just you know 
be more like him so thank you so much for watching if this blessed you don't forget to comment please comment i'm trying to build a community of people that love god together and this is one way that you can do it building godly relationships i'm trying to build godly relationships um, you know among my followers so please don't forget to comment like share with people so that i can reach a larger audience and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one till then remember that i love you so much but jesus loves you more stay blessed bye Oh, 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 oh,